our uh, friend from uh, USA that uh, has been doing also the support in the background so far. I will have to take over. Uh, you may know him from uh, Klucon, Astricon, and Kamaili World, and uh, one of our or maybe the biggest supporter and friend of uh, Kamailio project, as I know he likes to name <laughs> himself this way. Uh, Fred uh, Osner, uh, I'll let you introduce yourself uh, with more details about what you are doing uh, these days and then looking forward to your presentation. As usual, uh, handling SIP attacks, it's uh, something like a very high uh, Daniel everyone deploying it don't, don't forget to mention that he's one of the guys behind the enormous famous great fred cookie <laughs> right thanks for reminding that uh Ole. okay friend thank you again for all you have done for the project but also for this event uh, looking forward to your presentation thank you thank you so much and with that do i'll uh, jump to it and uh so hopefully, um, get right to it then one second. All right, so um, uh, today I'm talking about uh, SIP attack handling and um, my name is Fred Posner. And what we'll discuss uh, today will be uh, an introduction. Uh, we'll discuss some comma ilio modules um, that can help you with SIP attack handling. Um, some handling that you would do in the Comilio config, other type of handling, and then uh, we'll briefly, very briefly discuss um, API ban. So introduction, as Daniel said, uh, who am I? I'm Fred, um, I'm a big guy. So that's why I like to say that I'm the uh, biggest supporter. Uh, it's a big fat joke. Um, you can reach me at uh, Matrix is my favorite way of uh, talking with people. I'm on Twitter. I'm a voice over IP consultant, and I'm based in Florida here in the United States of America. Um, and that's my beautiful wife and daughter. OK, so what do I mean by uh, SIP attack? So let's define what we're talking about. SIP attack uh, basically is unwanted SIP traffic. So um, you could call it an attack because sometimes it is uh, designed to uh, do something negative towards your system. It could just be a script kitty, uh, you know, playing around. Uh, it could be someone playing with fuzzing. It could be um, an attack from via UDP, TCP, and TLS. We're seeing a lot more um, TLS um, SIP attacks, which I know would make Ole very happy. Um, and we also see some SQL injection. Uh, through SIP. So, um, you know, SIP is just a way of sending and communicating with traffic. And so if I can do that, then I can do anything I could, let's say via HTTP, I could probably do via SIP and we can have a lot of fun uh, against somebody's systems. So what are some of the main risks from unwanted SIP traffic and SIP attacks? Clearly fraud is probably the, the number one a uh, problem that, that someone might have. Uh, denial of service, of course, um, you know, from your handling of it, unauthorized access to your system, and they can compromise either your system or data. So those, those would be the main four, is that from an attack, I might be able to compromise your system. I might just be able to um, deny service to your paying customers and, and take you down. Or I might uh, be able to get some decent fraud uh, through your system. Now, um, I know that looking at uh, text on um, some of these virtual pre presentations are a little difficult, but um, I'm just going to show um, some uh, uh, examples here. So um, the first one would be, um, and I'm not sure how well that's coming across, but uh, which brings me up to a, a great point, um, and I'll show you that link in the next slide. But this would be, you know, just what your uh, CLI might look like uh, when you're looking at some SIP attacks. If I look at an example of a SIP attack, and again, I have on the bottom here a link to this presentation, 
and some links that will be discussed here. So if you want to go to uh, pgpx.io um, slash kw2021, you can see this, uh, see these slides on um, either SlideShare or download the um, the PB the PDF itself, as well as um, you know look at more detail into some of the things that we will be discussing. So, in some SIP attacks, you know, even though it might look like legitimate traffic, it's unwanted, and so um, the a thing of note here is if you look at the user agent, you'll see that it's a Linksys SPA 942. And on another example, you'll see it's uh, the same. This is uh, the most common I'm seeing in the last two weeks is uh, this as a default user agent. So people like to change the user agents. They're usually just using Sipficious or something like that um, against your system. But uh, the days of just leaving it as friendly scanner are coming to a close. So that is an example of what uh, just you know two example invites might look like when you're being sent. There are comma ilio modules which help you protect your system against um, unwanted SIP traffic uh, immensely. The first one I'd like to discuss would be the Pike module, which has been uh, a proud member of comma ilio for over 15 years. It tracks uh, the number of SIP messages per IP per a period of time. And it supports both IPv4 and IPv6. It's incredibly easy and simple to implement. Super, super simple. And the example that you would do for uh, implementing Pike would be to just first load the module, um, decide uh, how long of a period of time you want to use for a sample, um, how many requests you want to um, count, uh, as you know, hey, if I reach more than X amount of requests, I'm going to count it as uh, bad traffic. And then uh, how long you want to uh, remove uh, that that ability to connect. And so I would just then check if my pike had been my pike limits have been reached, and I can uh, then say, hey, here's an alert. I'm getting a uh, information from uh, the system and uh, exit. And it, and it's that simple. <laughs> Of course, with anything with Comma Ilio, it's what you do with this tool. So Pike works really well with HTable and DMQ. Um, I like to say that um, DMQ is great because when you, it's kind of like a NATO approach. If I attack one system, I can have all of my systems respond. Um, so I can share any information with another system. And um, you can, for example, use your dist uh, dispatcher list so that I'm not blocking, um, you know, so, you know, the, the pike is not counted if it's a, if it's a valid um, node from a dispatcher list, for example, or if it's in my auth table, or if it's um, in just an H table that I made up. So I can skip some nodes that are allowed to send me high traffic while maintaining defaults for the rest. Another great module is um, the SEC filter or SEC filter. Um, this one is new since 5.3, uh, Camellia 5.3, so two versions ago. And this gives you a list that uh, by default will either allow or block by user agent, IP, country, domain, users, as well as um, SQL injection. And so uh, it's a great, um, it's a great module that really helps you simplify your config. Um, there's great examples on the Camellia website about uh, working with um, SEC filter. So for example, you might want to load uh, the GLIP module. And of course, clearly, if you want to run SEC filter, you're going to load that module. Um, it, you can keep your list in a, in a database, of course. And uh, well, that's where you do keep up. They get loaded into. Uh, memory, decide if you want to have exact matches, and then there's basically a case scenario. So there's a, there's an example here where, okay, I'm going to allow this. Um, it's in my allow list, so let me let it through. Uh, it's not found. It's in my block list, you know, et cetera. And, and a more detailed uh, message on handling an invite uh, might be as uh, what I've posted here. 
but again, the key is, um, I know that this is uh, very hard to see on the screen. So if you go to that link that I have on the bottom in red, which is pgpx.io kw2021, you can uh, look at it, copy, paste, critique, draw on it, whatever you want. There are also some other modules uh, within Comma Ilio that really work well with um, helping uh, to determine if if traffic that you're seeing is unwanted or potentially uh, damaging to you. Um, each table we've discussed, uh, Daniel has an amazing quote that says, uh, if you're not using each table, you're doing something wrong. And each uh, table just, it's a hash table in memories. It allows you to um, store information uh, such as an IP address that is sending you unwanted traffic um, and access that information wherever you would like. Uh, DMQ is the Camellia Distributed Messaging Queue, and that allows you to share information across all of your Camellia nodes. So if I decide to block on one Camellia, and let's say I'm running 10 Camellias, I can share that information, and now that IP address is blocked on all 10. And that um, right there is a phenomenal use case of DMQ. The permissions module is really good for deciding, um, you know, okay, is this IP address allowed to um, talk uh, to or connect to Comma Ilio? Is this um, IP address uh, allowed to send, let's say, for example, international um, calls or something like that? So any of the um, known IP addresses that you would like to allow or block, uh, you know, in addition to SEC um, module can be done in permissions. GOIP we discussed a little bit, as well as GOIP2 for uh, doing country-based um, uh, identification through the GOIP2 libraries and lists. Phone num is one that I like. It's one of the, as Henning mentioned uh, earlier today, one of the 200 plus modules now in Comma Ilio is a phone num, which uh, looks for valid, um, valid phone number uh, routing type. So for example, uh, if I just made up a 10 digit number, it might not be a, ever a valid phone number. It, it's, you're not doing a lookup or anything. You just know that, you know, there's no way that a US number can be plus one zero, for example. Uh, so it's just checking to see that the phone number is a legitimately formatted um, phone number. Uh, and you can do that for the to or the um, from, however you'd like, and then, you know, choose to block on on that. I believe it's provided by Google. It's a library uh, in C, and um, it's updated uh, every so often, especially when there's changes in countries. And it's used by Android and things like that. Pipe and rate limit are ways of doing counting. So it's a great way of um, determining uh, if I'm getting uh, too many calls per second or too many invites per second, however you would like to uh, choose to limit um, uh, resources and block them that way. So um, you can also do this with, let's say, H table and um, auto expire. But with pipe and rate limit, it's, it's a fantastic way of uh, you know, holding out for SIP traffic that should not be wanted uh, through the modules. And and again, this would go well in if you were doing what uh, Yufei talked about earlier with, let's say, for example, SBC. Any of these informations can really help you protect your systems. In the Comma Ilio config, um, we can also get into um, protecting yourself against um, SIP uh, attacks. And so I, I've briefly discussed HTable as being your best friend. And I gave you my favorite quote from, from uh, Daniel. And the way I like to use HTable for SIP attacks is to temporarily block for a period of time using the auto expire um, feature of HTable. And uh, you could just use it to count occurrences. So on this example, which um, hopefully is okay to, to uh, read, um, I'm going to have uh, my H table, my size is uh, an exponent of two. So this is two to the eighth power is my size, uh, which uh, someone else can do the math, but it's a, uh, you know, 
was it 2000 or something? I don't know. Um, and I'm going to auto expire in 300 and that's uh, 300 seconds. And um, DMQ replicate would be if I had set this up so that um, I could uh, share this IP band table with all of my other comma alien nodes in my DMQ. And so for example, on this one, it's just gonna say, okay, on the pike, um, I'm going to go ahead and check to see if this IP is blocked. And if it's not, I'm going to block it. I'm gonna enter in this IP address within my IP band table and then give it a value of one. And then I can just uh, check and see if, you know, and then no longer just do it. If I, anytime this IP connects to my system, I'll just go ahead and drop. Um, so uh, I love HTable for, for something like this. You can also use it to count authentication attempts. And this is right from the Comma Ilio uh, website. So I have, um, again, that listed uh, on the slide. So you can, uh, instead of trying to read it on the screen, uh, you can read it uh, in your favorite viewer that you would like. Um, and you can uh, choose this to count for, in this example, um, authentication attempts. Uh, that are done so that uh, someone that's just doing a dictionary attack or anything like you would uh, like that against your system would be um, blocked once they hit the threshold of let's say three or five whatever you'd like um, you can count anything you could count failed registers you can count invites 404s um, call rates you know like a uh, calls per second or invites per second uh, international call attempts if you can think it, you can count it, right? So if it's anything that comes in your system that you can articulate, you can absolutely choose uh, to count it and then uh, go plus or minus however you would like. Um, and HTable is a great um, tool to use for this. The comma ilio config also has, um, you know, uh, the xlog module for example um, if i want to log every time a, a a block happens you know i can get descriptive in how i'm logging it of course if you don't review your logs then it doesn't matter what you log right so please um review your logs and uh and, and go from there and then uh but you know it's really good to to log information um and then uh, review it as, as necessary. Dialog, um, if I'm using a dialog module, I can uh, keep track of active calls, and that also works with uh, DMQ. And, and so then, um, you know, I can uh, share that type of uh, call traffic um, across my network. So if I have a user that uh, may have connected to, let's say, uh, Berlin and has two calls and then has two more calls in London, I can keep track that, okay, well, this user has uh, four calls, uh, so I'm not going to uh, let them make any more. So the unwanted of traffic through uh, dialogue and DMQ as well, and, and it works really well. Uh, within my config, I can use a sanity check. And uh, last year, I believe, uh, Henning did an, a, a great uh, presentation discussing uh, sanity check in detail, uh, but basically I'm checking to see if my uh, SIP message is uh, correct, and then with most of uh, comma ilio uh, modules and, and working out with that, the uh, number there of 17895 is a, an addition of which checks I'm going to do. So I could be checking, for example, um, a valid from, a valid to, a valid uh, RURI, uh, whatever I want, I add those all together, I come up with my number and that's what I am uh, checking. And then I could just uh, drop. Um, topology hiding and topology stripping helps you secure your system uh, through obscurity. Um, so I can hide some of my information and strip out uh, some information that might be um, coming to my system uh, that that could affect something else. Um, so that's uh, really good if I'm, uh, for example, um, afraid of something that might attack a system behind comma ilio. Uh, so I could strip out uh, any X headers or anything that, that is, is not wanted, or I could just use my uh, Topaz module um, to uh, almost act as a, 
I mean, uh, it's not, but I'm just going to say for the sake of argument of B2B UA, but it's clearly not a B2B UA. So I probably shouldn't have said that. Anyway, uh, you have a server header and uh, agent headers that you can uh, have access to the Camellio config. And um, one of the um, really nice things about this is um, it's great that you promote that, for example, this is Camellio, but um, at the same point, um, you know, if you're not going to update all the time, then maybe uh, putting in the version of comma ilio is not um, is not a, a, a great idea. Um, so you know you could just say comma ilio, or you could remove that um, completely. But uh, although I, I love seeing uh, the version in there, um, if you're not going to be up to date, then you're just advertising that you're using uh, perhaps a version that should have been updated. So we have some other handling and. Um, things that can help you out with handling SIP attacks. So going into what I just said there, updating comma ilio to the, to the newest versions that come out is a great way of protecting your, your comma ilio server. The software is uh, constantly updated uh, with anything from bug fixes to the rare, but yet still existed um, security vulnerabilities, as well as uh, memory enhancements, processing enhancements and new features. So please uh, update your comma ilio. It's uh, super simple with Git and, you know, some people like to use packages as well. Uh, we try to do as, as many different ways of you having access to update your system as great as possible, as well as updating the software. You should probably also update the operating system. So there, you know, there's a, well, I just tweeted the other day about a SSH library um, or SSL library, but who cares? There's libraries constantly being updated because that's what we do. We constantly improve ourselves, right? And then you could um, not just do your operating system, but you should also do your firewall and your network and all of your equipment should be up to date and checked for vulnerabilities. I would be remiss if I didn't mention fail to ban. Um, I have two biases against uh, fail to ban is that I don't like fail to ban and I really don't like fail to ban, but fail to ban uh, reviews your logs and uh, uses IP tables. The great thing about what uh, fail to ban does is that by blocking something in IP tables, I'm blocking it, um, you know, at a different layer than comma ilio gets it. So I get much better uh, performance. So if I'm being hammered by an IP, um, comma ilio will use more resources than IP tables to block that traffic, right? Just by the nature of how uh, Linux works and everything like that. So by blocking it uh, within IP tables, I'm going to do a better job, uh, significantly better. So uh, if you know that something should not attack you or should not reach you, dropping it or putting it in IP tables is uh, phenomenal. Um, but again, I really don't like uh, fail to ban because I, I just don't like the resources it does. But Kama Ilio has this really neat thing about um, um, uh, using HTTP client uh, to hit APIs. And we were just discussing yesterday how easy Golang makes it to make an API. So here, uh, if you go to GitHub, we have an IP tables API. So uh, just introduce that through uh, LOD slash Polner. It's a very, very simple API for adding and removing IP addresses uh, to a local chain in your IP tables called API ban local. It will make um, its own uh, chain in there and add it for you automatically. It's open source. Again, if you go to that link and that link is also on the PGP, PGPX page, um, it will automatically uh, block in IP tables for you and uh, works in conjunction with other things. Here's an example, but basically when uh, an item comes into H table, I'm going to block it there. I'm also going to send the query to IP tables API to block it in, um, in, uh, in my um, IP tables. And then when it expires, I'll remove it from IP tables 
because the uh, simple get um, uh, API uh, will work uh, for you there. And again, it's very simple. It was done uh, Monday. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, might enhance it more. Um, you know, it's just a simple interface to make it easy for Comilio or anything else that might uh, be able to send curl statements very easily to manage uh, a local IP tables uh, chain. Um, here's another example of, um, you know, something that came into Pike, um, you know, and so uh, this is what my Comilio log might look like. Um, so I'm blocking the IP and then I'm going to send it to, um, to the IP tables API to block. Um, here it is in um, the IP tables log to the to the next of it. It's gonna first check that it's a valid um, IPv4 IP address. I'll get yelled at by Oli later, uh, but right now it's only IPv4. Um, and so then uh, it's gonna create the local chain if it's needed. It's then going to uh, add it. And then uh, when it expires, it will remove it. Um, so here it's uh, processing the add, and then uh, uh, in this example, I had IP table set for a minute expiration. So about a minute later, it removed it. Uh, so it's very simple. I like that better than fail to ban because it's not reading the logs. It's happening proactively, and it uses um, almost no uh, resources that you can imagine. Uh, so very simple. And the last part I wanted to talk about was speaking of API ban, was uh, API ban. And uh, API ban is a uh, free service from LOD. It's uh, free as in beer. It's a community sharing of bad actors uh, via um, API. So uh, we have honeypots uh, throughout the world. Uh, Valen Narco was uh, incredibly helpful to me and he manages a lot of the honeypots and on that link that I have in there, there's actually um, a project that he's doing where he's reviewing a lot of the information that he's receiving from, from this honeypot collection. So you can see like user agents and things like that that are attacking you. Uh, but this is a client for IP tables um, we have in Go. So we'll automatically um, through an API get any of the IPs that should be blocked and goes and blocks them in IP tables for you. Um, and it, the new client will flush them out every seven days and reset it so that it doesn't get uh, too huge of a list. And they also on the site is an integration for Comilio via HTable. If you didn't want to use IP tables and you just wanted to, let's say, block it in um, uh, HTable instead, uh, and go from there. Uh, those are examples uh, for you. What I like about uh, API ban and, and this concept came from Comilio World with a lot of us uh, discussing over many years uh, different ways of uh, blocking. Uh, the reason that we like um, doing it this way is by you preemptively blocking an IP, hopefully you're just having your system uh, reduce the amount of attacks that you're getting because your IP will remain unknown for longer. But that being said, um, as I'm sure Sandra will tell anyone, uh, your system still needs to be uh, secured. The API ban is a tool to help you uh, limit uh, some of the traffic and, you know, hey, I already know this IP is bad. I'm not gonna accept any traffic period. Uh, but at the same point, uh, it's a tool. It's not a replacement for any type of security. And with that, I would like to thank you for flying Kama Ilio. Um, if you'd like to reach me, please go to qxork.com. Um, my name is Fred Posner. I'm on Twitter. There's a, one more link to the, um, to the presentation, which is also uh, listed in Matrix. And there's a picture of the Kama Ilio cookies that we used to make. Uh, and so I'm, Always honored to be here in Kama Ilio world and with uh, this community. This community is one of the most important parts of my life. So thank you so much uh, for letting me be a member of the community and I'm honored to present today. Thank you, Fred. Uh, I expressed it before, but I want to say it again. You 
do a lot for the community, especially with presence to many events in the USA, in North America, but also in the background for the infrastructure of the project, things that people usually don't notice, but uh, everyone relies uh, on it. Then, Thank you. Ole to come with uh, the nasty questions. Oh, it's gonna be hard, Fred, it's gonna be hard. Uh oh. Uh, but I want to chime in there. You're doing excellent work for uh, our infrastructure and uh, we're really grateful for all you do. But uh, we have some questions here from um, YouTube. Okay. Uh, can you provide some insight into the curation process for API ban? asks Ben Kaufman. Sure. Um, we have honeypots that should not receive any SIP traffic whatsoever. So any SIP traffic traffic that it gets are from people that are looking for um, systems uh, that uh, should be, um, you know, it's just looking for SIP systems. So we anything that attacks a honeypot or sends any SIP traffic to a honeypot is immediately listed in API band. These are uh, honeypots that are changed every now and then, uh, but they have no legitimate uh, use as a PBX and they never should be. There's also um, uh, some systems that we are in that we have directly uh, that are looking for uh, bad traffic attempts uh, and things like that. And those are um, also um, added uh, manually generally, but uh, the vast majority, I'd say over 98% of the traffic that are in API band comes from uh, honeypots itself. Okay. Oh, and then the process is once you're in uh, API band, you're in there for seven days, then you're removed gracefully, and then uh, you're added back uh, whenever you do another attack. Um, and uh, the vast majority of IPs that are listed have been blocked more than once. Henning, did you have a question? Yeah, just maybe to follow up on this part. Um... Do you experience any issues like, for example, with Hosta that rotate IPs to their servers? Like, for example, I get a new server and by chance it was used one hour before for some bad attacker and I get the same IP. Do you have some occurrences with these kind of issues? Yeah, we do have a lot of um, VMs uh, and VM users uh, that are um, not caring about the traffic that come out of their system so that you okay. know if you were to get a, a system uh you know it might it might be a um it might have been used in an attack an hour later an hour earlier right um so that's why we do the seven day um the seven day rule but that being said um you know that's something for you to address with your provider for those seven days until you're unlisted let's say you know the guy did it mm -hmm. yesterday and now you get this ip um, because that, that host provider should do something. And then the, the most active hosts are generally always the most active hosts. And so uh, that network is just um, a source of bad traffic. And I've identified, you know, I've reached out to them many, many times to try to see what they would do. And of course, uh, they could care yeah. less. Okay, I see. I mean, just if you grow, you might encounter some some needs maybe for some like unsubscribe or unban, whatever functionality, but as similar, for example, for spam, you know, there's some, yep. some similar way you also do a blacklist by wrong means, by some technical reasons, so that you have a way to, to unblock. Just yeah, scenario. so right now the seven days hasn't been a huge problem, uh, just because yeah. generally, hopefully, you know, you're you're not going in and then going live for oh, I'm I need all these uh, sure, sure. zip traffic that I'm sending out, you know, in seven days. But uh, yeah, I mean, if if that did become an issue, then uh, unsubscribe feature would be uh, not a problem if we could make it legit. Okay. You know, depending on the traffic that was hit, Thank of you. course. Yeah. Another question from the crowd. And this time the crowd is Sandro Gauci, well known. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, he asked for any tips on how to manage logs, not to break family by reading logs all night. Uh, monitor logs without employing a team of people to stare at them. So I first want to uh, just thank Sandro because the contributions that he's made to uh, 
VoIP security have been, uh, I, I, I mean, just immeasurable. Uh, so what a, what a phenomenal uh, contribution he's made and the sharing of information that he provides is just uh, uh, fantastic. Uh, so my first response to that would be, I, I don't understand the problem. Who doesn't love to read <laughs> logs? It's, uh, I mean, breathtaking uh, time and time again. Um, the way that I've always handled uh, logs is to spend the time at first trying to see patterns in logs and just getting familiar with what your system is logging um, and then going for um, items that normally don't get hit as much and then uh, uh, going from there and then um, so that you're reviewing your logs, seeing what, what normal patterns can be. And that could even be as simple as, uh, wow, my normal Monday log should be five megs and you know this one's seven megs. Uh, so why is, you know, what happened here? Um, and, and going from there as, as well as, um, you know, in Kama Ilio, for example, that you can change the, you know, maybe this, this item is informational, so I'll use L info. Uh, but a block, I might put L alert or L air um, so that uh, I can easily find uh, the items that I want to find. But as well as, you know, even if you just did uh, instead of, uh, you know, the Cliff Notes version is just looking at uh, log file size and, and trying to come up with ideas yeah. is what baseline should be. There was some discussion between all the audience. So if you want to know more, you can read a YouTube chat. Uh, I had a question here uh, from someone in Sweden called Johan. <laughs> uh, you didn't mention the Camellio counters and stats. I didn't. That, that was a, an excellent point. I should have mentioned that. Yeah, I normally use them to add counters, and then I graph them, and I see when bad things happen, when nor normalization is changing. And there's yeah, a lot that, of cool stuff you can do there, and we expose them through SNMP and other means as well. Yeah, and through Grafana and, and some of the other uh, to make easy to see charts for that information. It, that, that was a, a that, that's a great call out. Um, that was something I should have absolutely you, put you, in there. You can also add custom counters. Uh, we have a question from Mudasir uh, here. Uh, is there any documentation for API band or integration with asterisk? What is asterisk, by the way? Sorry. Uh, no, there's not because you can't really do anything with um, API band with asterisk because it doesn't give you the same type of uh, visibility that you would have with um, comma ilio. Now with um, PJ SIP, it's getting a lot better where you can get into headers and things like that. Um, so for asterisk, free PBX, free switch, um, what I recommend is IP tables. Um, or, and using one of our simple, co clients, simply adding a very thin camellio in front of it. Well, yeah, I mean, clearly the the putting a camellio in front as a sip edge router would be phenomenal. But my problem with, or it's not problem, but the way that asterisk and free switch, for example, handle it. By the time you've received a sip traffic, you're going to respond. So the the way that the reason why I like camellio integration for this is because I can still block. A response from comma ilio so that I've received a SIP traffic, but I'm not going to respond to it. With asterisk, if I receive that, I'm going to send it something, whether it's a 400 or something else, and I've already identified myself as uh, running asterisk, running this, running uh, whatever I want. So for asterisk or uh, free switch or any of the software that's derived from those two, I, I really recommend using um, API band uh, Go client um, and just integrating with IP tables and stopping it before asterisk has a a chance to re okay. return. And then if you wanted to, that new one with the curl could work if you're examining uh, some headers and want to stop. I have another question here from my dear, dear friend in Italy, Sandro. Uh, <laughs> he kind of asked if you have any IPv6 honeypots and if you see any special traffic on them. I, have, I don't have dedicated IPv6 honeypots. I do have honeypots that are connected via IPv6. And right now I don't have, okay. right now I don't have any traffic that's coming on IPv6, but I also want to make sure that uh, I know that 
on the API band system itself, we have the ability to enter in um, IPv6 addresses. Right now, there are none. So um, I'll double check and see what the reason for that is. Okay. Um, we, we have a few people that may help you, including someone anonymous in Sweden. <laughs> uh, and to end, uh, we have a proposal from an anonymous Englishman living alone in Italy. So <laughs> he wants to change the term honeypot with cookie jar in honor of dear Fred. Cookie, and, uh, cookie jar. <laughs> cookie jar instead of honeypots. And with that, I want to say thank you. We have a lot of feedback saying this is a great presentation, uh, really good. We learned a lot, and I have a lot of ideas. So thank you, Fred. A virtual applause for you.